Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Dorsey Wright video for Monday, November the 16th. I'm Jay Greg Nanny, and here joining me this week is Will Gibson. And it is uh, now hard to believe that we're into mid-November. Thanksgiving is coming up here uh, very quickly next week uh, upon us. And uh, as we come into uh, yet another week, the markets are reacting positively to um, you know, news events, certainly the Moderna news coming out with their uh, vaccine trials testing 95% uh, effective uh, rate there. And you know what we've, we've been seeing here in the market over the course of the past couple of weeks is, is that um, th the market has certainly um, been reacting to a lot of news out there, but it's been interesting to watch the areas that the market has, has really been gravitating towards and specifically some of those areas that historically, or at least for the, for the better part of this year, have been areas of underperformance or areas that have lagged here uh, the past week and really the past couple months, we, we saw this kind of continuation of um, areas that are more traditionally value oriented type of sectors, um, things like financials and even energy were among the best performing sectors over the course of the past week. And, and uh, those particularly have been uh, energy and financials specifically have been uh, the two best performing sectors, broad based sectors over the course of the past month as well. The year to date picture is certainly very, very different as energy and financials r remain down on the year. But, you know, here in the near term, we certainly have seen some improvement um, specifically, specifically among those sectors. And we'll talk a little bit more what we've seen show up uh, in, in terms of the, the ranking and the leadership amongst some of those areas like uh, small cap value specifically, which has been uh, one of the areas that has uh, come back quite a bit here recently after underperforming for quite some time. But really, the, you know, the, the past week uh, has what was was a week in which you know the things that have uh, have not done well uh, performed well, and and um, some of the other stronger areas, areas like technology, uh, pulled back a little bit over the course of, of the past week, but but still continue to show. Um, strong year-to-date performance, the XLK, which is technology, uh, up almost 40% still on the year. Uh, excuse me, up uh, a little over 30% on the year, 40% uh, over the trailing 12 months. Uh, and, and momentum or, or relative strength driven strategies, things like uh, the Focus 5 FB is up 16% on the year, PDP momentum up 25% on the year, uh, while the S&P 500 uh, index itself is, is up about 10% on the year. Uh, but we certainly uh, started to see that gap narrow a bit in terms of of the leadership trends and 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 um and, and the likes of the the more value oriented areas and even some just some of the, the size effect i mean large cap it has certainly been a very large cap dominant market uh so far this year over the course of the past couple of months though so you've seen that uh begin to 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 tighten um even to the extent of like the s p 500 equal weighted index um, it was up about five percent over the course of the um, of the past week, which is which is uh, done pretty well there. And that that performance spread of, of equal weight versus cap weighted has has uh, come down quite a bit. Um, but as we kind of look at uh, the, some of the point and figure charts, well, we, we've seen some um, very positive developments across a lot of indexes, a lot of charts out there. Um, you know, as as the market continues to try and push uh, towards new highs. Yeah, Jay, that's right. And I believe the charts that we're showing are just a visual manifestation of that. You know, we aren't showing the NASDAQ composite, the NASDAQ 100, or any of those large growth charts this week. We're showing the Dow and the Russell 2000. As you just mentioned, the Dow is edging towards that 30,000 mark. It's already hit a new intraday all-time high. So that's something that we'll be watching on the chart, that of which would complete a actual bullish catapult on that 200 point scale, well above positive trend as well. And then similarly, as you talked about, it's been a large size dominated market. We're seeing that performance gap close as well, highlighting the Russell 2000 on the right, the investable ETF or investable product, IWM, also pushing to a new intraday all time high at time of this recording. Also, well above positive trend. So to the point of that, we are seeing that performance gap close from the names that lagged on the year or outperforming on that near-term basis now. Call it maybe a bit of a laggard rally, laggard outperformance, leaders cooling off, a lot of synonymous ways to put it. And maybe just to put some numbers behind it, 
NASDAQ composite is up almost 32% through the year. That's through Friday. S&P is up just under 11 and the Dow is up just over three. However, on the last page, as we saw in the past seven days, Dow's up over 4%, S&P is up over two and the NASDAQ composite is actually down about half a percent. So just based off the charts that we're showing this week, the performance that we've seen, certainly seen that performance gap close on that size as well as just general leadership perspective. However, if we go one step further perhaps and look at some of the size and styles on the asset class group scores page, we do not see any material rotations from that macro perspective just yet. We still have our growth camp at the top of the asset class group scores rankings. Small cap growth currently number one with a 4.91 average fund score. And then at the bottom, we still have money market. However, an interesting note here, which we were talking about before, Jay, is that all of the size and style groups that we're seeing right now are actually above that technical kind of sought after acceptable range of 3.0. Speaking to the recent breadth in the market across all size and style groups, albeit that we are seeing the most recent strength from your small values, the mid values, some of the blends as well. However, by and large, it's, it's general participation. And one more point I would like to note is the 30-day movement that we have to the bottom right-hand side, reiterating that you have your small value as the best performer as a group in that perspective. But note, money market is still at the bottom. We aren't seeing a pure rotation out of out of that per se, but by and large, breadth, positive action, yet no material size and style shift just yet, Jay. That's right. You know, that's that's pretty interesting. And, and I don't know, I'd have to go back and look kind of historically, but you know, the fact that we're seeing all of the major style boxes across the US equity market having scores above three mean that, that all of them are viable. There's certainly, you know, you see uh, small cap growth has the highest um, score so that it, that you know the growth and the mid cap growth and large cap growth so those would be the things that are uh, continuing to to dominate the leadership areas um, but the fact that you're seeing uh, mid cap value large cap value small cap value all have scores above three means that they're they're all viable options today they're all um, what we would consider to be technically sound areas of the market and so as you're as you're putting new money to work looking to allocate I mean, certainly those areas are uh, very much viable, very much in play in terms of, of having strong um, technical pictures uh, as it relates to their, their, their general group. So, you know, that is certainly something important. And, and I think to your point of, you know, that just kind of speaks to the breadth that, that we've seen in the market. And, and that um, kind of carries over into what we've seen within Dolly as well, at, at seeing U.S. equities move back up to number one back in August. Um, but the, the, the signal count, the tally signal for U.S. equities uh, has continued to grow and and really here over the course of the past month we've seen that that tally count that uh, is 298 for domestic equity so that means that um, amongst the domestic equity representatives within Dolly they they account for 298 relative strength buy signals uh, within the Dolly rankings there, there's about uh, just just shy of 1100 signals that are up for grabs within Dolly U.S. equities accounts for about 27 percent of all of those buy signals now uh, with 298 and and that has grown uh, about that jumped by about 26 signals here just over the past few weeks. So, um, you know, and, and a lot of those signals came from those areas like small cap as the small cap areas, um, you know, have, have come along, have started to participate, seeing some new relative strength buy signals out of the small cap area. Uh, is, is something that we've seen uh, continue to push that signal count for U.S. equities higher. Um, one of the other stories, though, within Dolly that we've been keeping a close eye on has been international equity. And while U.S. equities has picked up a number of buy signals, international equity has actually seen the most improvement in its signal count, picking up almost 50 new buy signals here just uh, over the course of the past couple of weeks, moving that asset class. So international equities is now the third ranked asset class 
uh, within Dolly. And that's kind of been a very similar story to what we've seen in the U.S., where uh, internationally the, the leadership was, was pretty narrow for, for quite some time. Um, you know, not looking at while, while the U.S. market, obviously, you know, the large cap, the growth had been the dominant uh, area as we've seen some broader participation, as we've discussed in the small and mid cap area. You, you've seen something similar uh, internationally, too, where um, internationally you, you saw some very, very concentrated um, leadership amongst you know things like China uh, and Taiwan uh, and India. So those those areas uh, were amongst those leadership trends. But you've seen that uh, expand out a little bit. Asia Asia Pacific region in general is is an area that continues to to um, have have good strength. But you've seen um, some of that uh, leadership, some of the movement within inter international has expanded out a little bit more uh, to even some more developed countries like Japan and in the Asia Pacific region. Um, with the improvement in uh, crude oil prices that we've seen here recently, you've also seen some some uh, improvement amongst um, some Latin America economies like Brazil as well. Brazil, uh, that chart, the point figure chart for the Brazil ETF EWZ recently moved back into a positive trend. So the 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 um, the, the fact that you're seeing that um, that expand out the, the movement, the rally within international equities is, is continued to expand out um, to the point that the um, cash percentile rank for international equities has dipped below 50%. And what that means is if you think about a, a ranking system, so if you were to, to, to lay out all of the you know, countries and regions around the world and we throw in a money market proxy in there, that cash percentile rank tells us where that money market proxy falls. And at right now it's it's at 44.8%. So it's just below the halfway point, which means now for the first time um, since the, the uh, Mar or February, March time, per time period, the first time now that more than 50% or a majority of the international representatives that we're looking at are ranking above cash. And so, you know, that is just speaking to, again, the, the, the broadening out of that rally that we've seen. There's more, uh, more options within the international equity space now that are ranking above that money market proxy. And we're continuing to see that, that number downtick. So the lower that number goes, the more positive it is for that asset class. And you can even see there on the screen, I mean, domestic equity, the cash percentile rank is down at, at about 12% which means that there's a vast majority of the U.S. equity market that is above uh, money market today, about 82% of the, the U.S. equity market ranking above that money market proxy today. So, um, you know, that, that'll that certainly be something to watch. But, you know, as you're thinking about, again, if you're putting new money to work or looking um, areas, U.S. equities is certainly still the dominant trend, but international equities, there's a lot of, of positives uh, going uh, right now for international equity. So that is certainly an asset class that we uh, we would look towards and, and uh, 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 look at taking some exposure. Uh, if you don't have some or even even underweighted the fact that international equity is now up in the top half, uh, it's a positive sign for that asset class. Um, so with that said, um, you know, obviously a lot going on uh, positively for equities, another picture and another indicator that we've monitored uh, for, for quite some time and, and, and looked very closely at this year has been um, uh, trending indicators and one specifically looking at uh, the percent of stocks in the S&P 500 that are in positive trends today, um, moving up close to, to uh, where we were in, in the highs up at 82 percent. Uh, well, so basically if, we're, if we look at all S&P 500 stocks today, 82 percent of those stocks are in positive trends. Yeah, Jay, that's right. And that's and that's rather tremendous, I would say. Also speaking towards our loose topic of breadth today, whether it be broad asset classes, various size groups, various style groups, um, you name it, there's a lot of participation. And we see that concentrated here as well in the S&P 500 universe. As you just mentioned, 82% of stocks we're currently seeing in a positive trend. So technically trading above their bullish support lines and we've added one table for context in the upper right-hand side. Your, your eye will see that we hit this in June of this year. And then prior to that, it was actually in 2018, where we saw 82% level reached. And it may appear frothy. It may appear a bit ominous to some. Um, however, we did a short study, and this was updated through about the middle of October. But the point is that 
Once we move above 75%, which is a rough line of demarcation for us when we're doing some studies, it's not all bad news as long as we're in a column of X's. We see an annualized return when above 75% in a column of X's, about roughly we'll say 11.5%, which is very strong. Um, this indicating a lot of participation, no signs of extreme frothiness given the current picture, but things to watch going forward, I would add, would be reversals down into a column of O's from this elevated territory. Uh, we're not seeing that take place today, nor do we expect that to happen per se, but it is something that we would suggest putting an alert on. But by and large, positive story across the asset classes, across the style groups, as well as within the domestic equity markets here as well. So Jay, that said, I believe we hit on all that we wanted to cover this week, but before we go into closing remarks, would you like to add anything for the listeners? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that that fact that you're seeing a majority of stocks, you know, S&P 500 stocks in positive trends today is certainly a positive sign. Historically, when you, you see these PT indicators, so this is PT SPX, or if you even look at like PT NYSE, so percent of stocks on the New York Stock Exchange that are in positive trends, um, historically, readings above 50% have been have been healthy signs for the for the, for the market, and and basically what that means is you know if those readings if those numbers are above 50 percent, then it tells us that a majority of stocks are in positive trends, and those you know those have historically been uh, been generally positive signs for the market. So uh, as you mentioned, it's always a great idea to, to set alerts for uh, potential uh, action downside, like a reversal down in the PTSPX would be something uh, I'd want to know about. Something that you, you want to be aware of just to make sure uh, if you're holding some of those individual stocks and you know making sure those are not the names that are breaking down moving into negative trends but um with that said you know as always we we certainly appreciate um you taking time out of your day to join us to, to uh to hear what we are looking at in the market and as we're going forward uh if there's anything that we can do to help you and your business please don't hesitate to reach out to us um, phone numbers email addresses are on the screen there um and uh with that said uh once again appreciate it will great talking to you today. Thanks for being on and I hope everybody has a great rest of the week and we look forward to talking to you next week.